thanks to the supporters of channel member Igor Freitas. Well, here we go then, boys and girls. A second Premier League summer transfer window here at Burton. And maybe some tentative, just having a little look to see what other... I won't say... I won't say I'm looking for another job, but I'm, for the first time, making myself aware of what jobs might be available, just in case, because I, I'm very much getting taken this club as far as I can vibes. I might have changed my tune completely by the end of the video, but realistically, no matter what we do transfer-wise, I don't think we're going to be able to sign a Premier League-sized stadium, are we? Hello and welcome to Club 2, part 28 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, it is our season review and transfer special at the end of our first season in the Premier League, which, of course, as you saw yesterday, did end with us not just surviving, but doing quite well in the end, didn't we? Um, so if we have a look through the season review, first of all, it looks like we... Oh, no, we do have a signing of the season. It's Thomas Galvez. He started 10 games. That is an absolute madness. I mean, I know we didn't really have anybody who got much in the way of an average rating. Um, I would have given it to Luis Avalos. I think him coming in was a huge difference maker. As a young player, loads of potential. If he doesn't graduate to full Wonder Kid status... Over the course of the next few months, I would be very surprised. But for an 18-year-old, our first 18-year-old South American, and I think he was an enormous difference maker for us. But I don't make the decisions. The board were looking for us to avoid relegation from the Premier League, and we ended up finishing 11th, which, of course, they are delighted about. Um, 11th place, way, way, way off the pace of Europe. And we've been nowhere near European qualification, still nearer to relegation than European qualification. I have looked at both Aston Villa and West Ham to see what their manager situations are. They've both got new managers in the last couple of months, so... I think if we were going to jump ship to either of those, it probably would have had to have been earlier in the season. So as much as Aston Villa in particular would be a re I mean, it would be a very, very logical next step, next move in this journey. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. I mean, unless, of course, they uh, they start badly, maybe October, November time. I am not against dropping back down to the championship for a much bigger club, if that's what we have to do to get to a bigger club. It certainly seems, people have been trying to tell me all the way through, it's not the case, but it certainly seems to me that career progression through getting new jobs much harder on FM24 than it's been on previous versions of the game. Um Finance wise, we have we've actually dropped a little bit on sponsorships. I mean, to give you some context on that sponsorship thing, remember when we were down in League Two and we were flabbergasted that we had nearly five million pounds in sponsorships? Our sponsorships have barely changed since League Two, and we're now in the Premier League. We've gone from that being a huge unfair advantage that we had in League Two to presumably the lowest level of sponsorships in the entire Premier League. Obviously, it's been balanced out a little bit by broadcast revenue. So for us, we've had loads more money come in this year. But in context of the Premier League, our sponsorships are low, our stadium is tiny, and everyone else gets the same broadcast revenue we get. And nearly half of them get European money as well. So even though being in the Premier League is better for us in terms of our bottom line financially obviously it puts wage costs up transfer costs go up and year on year we're actually falling further behind those other clubs who have the bigger stadiums the bigger sponsorships they're bringing in more money every year so the gap between us and them actually increases this is what i mean when i say we're potentially taking the club as far as we can but i mean Decent amount of money through the door this year is jolly nice. We had nobody who averaged over a seven, which I don't know that I've ever happened, ever had happen in Football Manager before. Um, looking at our team of the year, there are definitely players in there that need to upgrade this summer. Bender, we know we've already got a new goalkeeper coming in. Kitching, um, obviously, has already been upgraded by Avalo, who we've already talked about. Joe Powell shouldn't be anywhere near the team of the year. Um, and the likes of Vidovic, even Divine. I'm not sure... He, I mean, even Lee Byrne. I don't think anybody is untouchable when it comes to uh, comes to being replaced. Vidovic got Fans Player of the Year, despite only getting a 6.9. Alfie Devine, at age 24, got Young Player of the Year. Galvez, as we know, signing of the season. Um, top scorer was Lee Byrne with 18 goals. Most assists, Vidovic with nine. Most man of the matches, Vidovic with six. Highest average rating was actually Stephen Bender, who I've been picking on all year, who apparently did average a 7.0. 
even though we never saw any evidence of him averaging a 7.0. Um, and Lewis Jackson broke the record highest transfer in the history of the football club at £13 million. We've, we're building our defence around him. I imagine that record has a good chance of getting broken again this summer. Are any of the upcoming transfers for more than that amount? I don't think they are. No. But, you know, we've got a lot of players coming in and uh, a lot of opportunities to break that transfer record as the summer goes on. We've got £28.5 million pounds to spend even after those signings that we've already made. So these are all our pre-arranged signings. We met them in yesterday's episode, I think. So... That's most of a new defence and midfield already arriving. So we might not need to do a huge amount. We could probably buy two or three players with that £28 million and end up with a very solid-looking squad. We'll see, I guess. I'm not thinking in terms of giving Stavanovic a new contract. At 26 years old, I mean, he's a player who started only six games for us last year. He's probably signalling that he's going to be leaving the club because if he's going to push for a new contract... I am not inclined to give him one. Um, so let's see if that upsets him. Um, can't hand you a new contract. Um, uh, if my contract should reflect blah, 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 blah. You're not getting a new contract. He's going to consider his options. Well, let me go one step ahead of you, Philip. Let's see if we can get any offers for you. No, not at the moment. I suspect he'll probably be moving on at some point this summer. There's our all-time best eleven. So O'Donoghue has made it onto the bench of the all-time best 11. It's starting to get a very much a familiar feel as players we've had throughout the all-time best 11. We've been here a while now. It's not often we uh, we get this many seasons done with one club in non-league legend. Uh, but we, you know, we've taken this club all the way from the, the fourth tier to the Premier League and now established itself in the Premier League. I say established itself. The goal for this year is still to avoid relegation or even it's still to attempt to avoid relegation. So theoretically... Even after finishing 11th this year, we could still get relegated this coming season and the board won't sack me for it, which I guess is nice. Nice little bit of job security. Um, we're going to be in a relegation battle next time. Yeah, they're happy with that. And is there anything else on here we need to be aware of? We're going to the USA and not really... Um, if we have a look at players who want to leave, it's only Stavanovic and Vidovic. I mean, it's not that they want to leave. They want more money. I don't really want to give either of them money. I think we can do better than them. So we'll probably let those two boys go. Like I say, we've got a lot of players coming in. So it's difficult to judge the squad until they're here. There's also a lot of clauses available to buy. We've got no interest in buying clauses. Um, but I think we probably need to get forward to the date that all these players arrive, the 12th of June and then have a look to see what our squad looks like with those boys in it, and then come up with a plan for what we need. I'm thinking we probably need a striker. The new keeper, Quintana, is probably going to be the answer there. We might still need another defender. We've got Jackson, we've got Avalos, we've got Sean Potter coming in, um, but Lem Lemkin and Kitching are probably going to leave this summer, so we probably need one more centre-back. Um, Left-backs, I think we're fine. Right back, if Andy Gallagher turns out any good, we might be fine. Um, defensive midfield, we probably need another body in here. We've got Oscar coming in who can play as a deep-lying playmaker. So he kind of covers that side. Uh, but on the other side, the ball-winning midfielder, there's not really... I mean, we've got Rodrigo Alonso, who will definitely be around the place. But beyond him, we probably need another option. Alfie Devine needs an upgrade. It might be that this guy is that upgrade. He's going to come in with a lot of potential. So we might make do with those two. Um, but I think we probably need to rethink the wide areas. If we've got players who've got grumpies on asking for money. If Stavanovic and Vidovic are both leaving, they're both going to need replacing. And I don't think we've got young players coming through ready to replace them. And like I say... At the very least, if we're not replacing Lee Byrne, we need to replace Ross Stewart as a backup striker. So there's there's things to do, but let's jump forward to the 12th of June. Unless, of course, we get an announcement before then about maybe a new stadium. That would be nice. That would convince me to stay. Can we even ask? Have we got we've got money in the bank? Hey, board. Let's ask about expanding the stadium first. We'll, we'll go in gently. Can we expand the stadium? And if they say no, then we'll ask to build a new stadium. I feel like I shouldn't have to do that. It's two separate requests. It's pretty clear. The he What? Just an immediate Burton have agreed to rent the Peter Shielden Stadium next season. 
For a start, what on earth is the Peter Shilton Stadium? Um... So this is one of those random stadiums that football manager builds for like the Euros and stuff, I think. So it was built in 2025, presumably for the Euros being in England, even though there's already two stadiums in Nottingham. Um, so they could have, play- I mean, they could have just played those games at Forest or expanded the, the city ground at Forest. But no, they built the Peter Shilton, Peter Shilton Stadium, which presumably has sat empty for four years. It's a 42,200 capacity stadium in Nottingham. I mean, Nottingham's not the closest to Burton. It's not a million miles away. Um, it's obviously the other side of Derby, but that'll do nicely. And as part of that, we are expanding our stadium. How far are we expanding our stadium? Can we just stay in Nottingham? Because I bet we're not building our own 40,000 capacity stadium. <laughs> we're going to enlarge our stadium by 2,500 seats, which is going to take us 10 months and cost us £3 million. So we've got a 42,000 capacity stadium for a year. And then next season, we're back at the Pirelli. <laughs> And it's going to be uh, 7,500 capacity when we come back. That's, I mean, get a grip, board. That is ridiculous. Can I now ask for a new stadium? Probably not, no. Well, I mean, the Peter Shilton Stadium came out of nowhere. It's a proof of concept. Let's see how many fans are willing to travel to Nottingham and watch us play Premier League football for a year, and that will give us a real idea of what we need to do with our stadium. I don't know why we don't just rent it and not build for a year. Rent it and see what happens would be the logical thing to do. I guess this is why I'm just the handsome first team manager and not not involved with the board in any way. Charlie Coyle, um, you're not having a professional contract. You're rubbish. 12th of June. Here we come. Oh, by the way, naming the game channel members, if you're wondering why I didn't post the youth intake this year, it's because it's absolute dross. So as soon as we get someone who's at least a three-star potential player, I'll give the option to take them again. For now, none of you wanted this lot anyway, did you? Let's see if we can improve the youth facilities. We're spending money. Let's increase youth level. I mean, if we if they give me everything I want, maybe I'm just going to stay forever. Improve youth recruitment as well. We train at St. George's Park, for goodness sake. We should be able to do good youth development. Are they just going to give me this straight? No. Okay, so I've got to deal with the Stavanovic situation now. I'm going to go and do that, and I'll meet you when the new signings arrive. Okay, now I'm really confused. I don't think that initial stadium move and expansion was the one I asked for. That's why it was so quick. I think that was happening anyway. They're now pleased to announce plans are afoot to expand our stadium. The planned expansion, subject to approval, will increase the stadium capacity to a provisional capacity of 47,419 and cost in the region of £25 million. The construction work will begin at the end of the season and is currently scheduled to be completed by July 2030, so next year. Tell me we're not expanding the Peter Shilton Stadium. No, I don't understand! Football manager is not broken. <laughs> I won't hear it. What is happening here? I no longer know how big our stadium is going to be next year or the year after. That makes forward planning really easy. If the Pirelli is going to be nearly 50,000 capacity, A, that's insane. The board have lost their mind. But B, this could be our forever club. Training at St George's Park and in a 50,000 capacity stadium. We can win the Champions League with that. But I, 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 I don't know what's going on. Because it even says there, moving back into the 7,500 capacity Pirelli Stadium. I really, really hope we're not paying £25 million pounds to expand the ground we're renting for a year. Uh, I mean, watch this space, I guess. So here are all our new boys. Let's meet them all properly. So Mohamed Amin Adala is an attacking midfielder who can also play out on the right-hand side. Three stars of current ability, 
five star potential. He joins us for seven and a half million pounds from Bologna. Oscar is a 21 year old Spanish defensive uh, defensive midfielder, two and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential. He joins us from Espanol for four point six million pounds. Diego Solari is a 21 year old Argentinian striker. Um, he's got three and a half stars of current ability, four and a half stars of potential. He's better than any striker we've got at the club at the moment. He joins us for £6.25 million from San Lorenzo. Sean Potter is a 21-year-old English centre-back who, yeah, I mean, you don't hit with every one of these. He's here. <laughs> Andy Gallagher. I mean, yep, he's here too. Less excited about some of these than I am about others. Dan Ionita is a 19-year-old Romanian international left-back. Three stars of current ability, five stars of potential. Joins us for £3.2 million from a Romanian club. Um, and lastly, August, Agustin Quintana. We have a wonder kid goalkeeper, boys and girls. A Uruguayan under-23 international. Three and a half stars of current ability. Four and a half stars of potential. He is an actual wonder kid goalkeeper. £1.2 million from MC Talk in Uruguay. That, boys and girls, is a pretty solid start to the transfer window. Let me just welcome them all in and sort out the squad planner and then we can figure out exactly what we're going to do. So, in addition to those lot coming in, we've also agreed the sales of both Vidovic and Stevanovic. Vidovic leaving for Altai for £14 million. Stevanovic to Mallorca for £18 million. Huge profits on both of those. Vidovic was here a year and a half and we're selling him for nearly 14 times what we paid for him. Stevanovic was here three years after joining on a free transfer and only starting six games last year and leaves for 18 million. So even with all those new boys coming in, with those ones being sold, we've got 49 million pounds off of transfer budget to play with once we've looked through this squad planner. Obviously, bearing in mind, we're close to maxed out on wage budget, so we'll have to do some wiggling around so we won't necessarily be able to spend the full 49 million pounds but this is what the squad planner now looks like in goal um quintana obviously the starter bender will try and convince him to be backup if he doesn't want to be james trafford is fine as backup so in fact we'd probably let bender leave and we could go with trafford and tolbert as our two backups is bender is he homegrown when, when did he join swansea he is oh he is homegrown in england so actually it doesn't matter which one of those stays. We'll have a we'll figure out what we're going to do there. At left back, um, we've already got Sousa and Galvez. We've just got Ionita who's come in as well. Um, so we are overstocked, if anything, at left back. It does mean it's probably the end of the line. But Blaine Chambers Shaw, who uh, never really fulfilled his potential, didn't even really play when he went out on Plymouth, went out on loan to Plymouth. Um, Imari Samuels is still here. I mean, some of these boys definitely need to be moving on. Uh, right back, Andy Gallagher, despite me not being overwhelmed with him coming in, he's actually our best right back currently. So we definitely need to sign a right back. Behind him, we've still got Popov, who of course was our starter this year, but he's 29 and not good enough. So we'll look to move him on. And then at centre back, we've got Lewis Jackson and Avalos as starters. Potter, is fine as like a utility backup guy, but Lemkin and Kitching and Cabango will all be leaving. So we need at least one more centre-back to come in. So that's a right-back and a centre-back on the shopping list currently. Our ball-winning defender, Zaruki, joins us permanently. He still hasn't actually confirmed his permanent signing yet. Although we did have him on loan for the second half of the season and didn't really use him. Um, we might have to start using him. And to be fair, him and Alonso probably can do the job there. For a little bit longer, Xavier, Xavier Simons probably needs to move on. He's uh, he's not quite good enough. And if he does go, we could probably get away with bringing in another one. And then there's the, the deep line playmaker, Oscar, the new boy. Loser, of course, who was there last year. Um, and then, I mean, Kingsley Aziz is someone we probably need to start using at some point. He's been out on loan at Peterborough this year in the championship. Is he going to be ready to come back into the first team squad? Maybe. We'll see how he is when he comes back from his loan. But Joe Powell definitely does need to leave. And then as our attacking midfielders, Divine, Adala, I think we're probably okay. We've still got Pocho as well. Um, and a couple of the wide players can play centre mid. Patrick Roberts needs to leave. And then on the left-hand side, new striker, Solari, is our best left winger currently. So that tells me we probably need a left winger because if Solari's involved up front, Roberts is leaving, 
the rest of these are either leaving or not good enough. We need at least one left winger. On the right-hand side, we've obviously got O'Donoghue, but he is attracting interest. So he has got a release clause. We'll, let's try and get him a new contract that doesn't involve a release clause because that's the most crucial thing with him. We want that release clause taking away. And his agent is still insisting on one. He's not having a massive pay rise without without removing the release clause. So he might end up leaving because of the insistence on the release clause, in which case we'll need more right wingers. As it is, we're probably good with what we've got. And then up front, Lee Burns still the best guy we've got. O'Donoghue can play there, but we never use him there. Solari can play there. And Ross Stewart needs to go. So there's lots of fringe players to move on. And I think we need a defend, a centre-back, a right-back, possibly a playmaker back here, a left-winger, a striker. We've got 50 million to do it, plus whatever we can get for these other guys. There's business to be done, boys and girls. Told you we'd probably break the transfer window and we uh, the transfer record, and we have broken it. And we have returned Joni Dubai to the club, part of our promotion winning team from down in the championship. And um, went back to Genk, actually played relatively regularly for them. Lazio were interested in him. Apparently, that's a club that exists. Um, but he had a minimum club fee release clause, £23.5 million. Pounds. We've had to pay it all in one go, but we have our right back back. He's still only 20 years old. Three stars of current ability, four and a half stars of potential. He will just uh, slot straight back into the position. We never really replaced him in. We thought we'd brought in another wonder kid as well. Usain Homo is a German 19-year-old defensive midfielder who can also play centre-back. Um, he was all set to come in, um, and then he failed his medical because apparently having a damaged spine is not ideal. I didn't notice that when I was negotiating with him. Um, we'll try and go back back in for him later in the summer if we have any money. There are other deals we're trying to do as well. As soon as we have some confirmed... I will show you them. Oh, transfers are happening. We managed to get Stephen Bender out of the club for £10 million. He's gone to Nice. That is what I'm going to uh, describe as a nice piece of business. £2.8 Played for us for a year. Sold him on for £10 million. That will do nicely. James Talbot, inexplicably, has gone to Manchester City for £45,000. He's not even homegrown. Oh, he is homegrown um, from his time at Sunderland. Okay, that's less inexplicable, I guess. Still not very explicable. Explicable? Let me know down in the comments the quick way to use those words. Um, and we've managed to bring in another couple of players. Well, of course, you know all about Dubai coming in. Um, we've also got a guy who's potentially going to keep him out of the team. Paul Payjoy um, is a right back who's basically a midfielder i think he actually might end up being someone we train to play defensive midfield rather than using him at fullback um he's a natural inverted wing back which isn't something we really use he can play either fullback but i think that's probably the role we're going to use him in i think um he was only 1.3 million pounds signed straight out of columbia and uh potentially is better than Dubai just from a star rating perspective but obviously completely different kind of fullback so less probably not going to use him we'll see we will, we'll figure something out Dylan Smith has joined us from Aston Villa relegated Aston Villa and um, he was out on loan at Rangers last season in the Scottish Premiership we've managed to pick him up for around 10 million pounds he's a six foot four centre back who's only 23 and has played 24 times for Scotland that feels like a decent piece of business and then moving into the stuff that's gone through this season we're starting to move players out of the door and um, Victor Popov has gone to Turkey for 4.1 million pounds a slight profit we've made on him as well we're selling almost everybody at a profit. Liam Kitching has gone on loan to the season to Kilmarnock. And um, we already knew knew about Stevanovic and Vidovic both leaving. Stav Lam Lemkin, who we signed last summer on a free transfer, five and a half million pounds. He's off to Greece. And then we've spent some of that money. Sam Amo Amior is a left winger and striker, natural in both of those positions. He's nice and quick. Um, he's good enough, certainly, to start in either of those roles for us. Probably more likely to use him out wide than up front because we've obviously got Lee Byrne as a striker. And it, again, different kind of player, but he was signed by by Crystal Palace for £21 million and they got relegated. But he did do 21 goal contributions in the Championship last year. We've picked him up for his release clause at £22 million. We've also brought this guy in from Chelsea. 
Yeah, Chelsea on a free transfer. Um, he's previously of Ajax, but joined Ajax on a free transfer, then joined Chelsea on a free transfer, has had multiple loans, including one in the championship for Watford last year where he got 10 goal contributions. Um, he's joined us now on a free transfer, 24 years old, former Belgian, under 21 international, natural on the left wing and attacking midfield, can also play right wing, can even play defensive midfield, not that I necessarily plan to use him there. Um Three stars of current ability, four star potential as well. The two of those combined are our new left-hand side, basically. And as we know, Zaruki has joined us permanently and I would very much like him to leave, but I don't know that we're going to be able to sell him immediately upon him arriving at the club. That's probably a big ask. So let's just check if we... Let's bring Payjoy into the first team squad. Um, and if we have a look at how the squad is now looking, it's certainly starting to take shape. Uh, Money-wise, we've spent most of it, although there's potentially more about to come in because we've had an offer of £30 million for loser. Um, I think £30 million for a 30-year-old is a no-brainer. So we'll let him leave. We should also have Xavier Simons and Blaine Chambers Shaw leaving the club as well. So there's more business still to be done. But for now, this is what the squad is looking like. Um, Quintana as a starting keeper and Trafford as backup. Probably need a third goalkeeper coming in. We've got plenty of depth at left back and now at right back as well. So we're fine at full back. I'd probably like one more centre back. Uh, we've got Jackson Smith, Avalos, Cabango, we're still trying to get rid of. Um, Sean Potter, I'm not sure he's someone I want to rely on just yet. He's more of a utility fourth choice. So we probably still need one more defender. As our deep line playmaker, if loser goes, we've only really got Oscar or maybe even Alfie Devine as options. Remember, Devine was originally signed to play in that role. Um, he's not exactly tearing things up as the attacking midfielder in the Premier League, but could potentially drop back and fill that spot and rotate with Oscar there with loser moving on. And then at ball winning midfielder, Zaruki theoretically is better than Rodrigo Alonso. Although, as I've said a couple of times already, we didn't use him there last season, but maybe if we've got to keep him, maybe I'll use him. We'll see. And um, we've still got Rodrigo Alonso as well. And we've got to fit Kingsley Aziz in somewhere. Although it's the 1st of July and he's still on loan at Peterborough. He does come back today. I don't know why he's not back yet. So we still can't have a proper look at him. So maybe still another ball-winning midfield player. Um, at attacking midfield, um, we've got the new boy in, um, Stanis Edum Edumbo Mazambo um, is our best attacking midfielder. Now we've got the new boy Adala as well. Divine can play there too, as can new boy Solari, as can Pocho. We probably don't need any more attacking midfielders. On the left-hand side, with the three new boys in, I think we're set over there. O'Donoghue obviously starts on the right, and a lot of the new players can play out there as well. And up front, we're still looking probably to start with Lieburn, but we have actually got some players who can compete behind him now. O'Donoghue, Solari, Amo, Amior can all play up there. So unless we can find a really, really good striker, I don't know that we necessarily need to upgrade there, but I'm thinking centre-back. If we can find a centre-back who can also play defensive midfield, that would be ideal. I mean, this is the guy. Is he recovered from his, from his back yet? He's the guy I want, really. Natural there would start for a football winning midfielder, but could provide cover at centre-back as well. Hurry up and fix your spine, you silly goose. Well, a few more weeks have passed and more business has been done. Pocho signed permanently. I actually forgot that deal was going to be going through, but he has joined us permanently as well. Um, we've also signed Angelo, a Brazilian former under-20 international right winger who can also play up front. He was released by Chelsea. He joins us on a free transfer. And we might need him as well because O'Donoghue is starting to attract a lot of interest around about his release clause. We had to turn down a £37 million offer from Aston Villa. His release clause is 36 and a half, but some of it was on installments. But as you can see, he's also wanted by Lazio. I suspect we're going to get an offer in the very near future that meets his release clause. We've offered him that new contract that we looked at before that has the £40 million release clause. So I guess if he signs it, even if someone meets it, he won't go until January because generally once players have signed contracts, they don't then leave. But I mean, until he signs it, Lazio could come in and just take him away from us. So we need we need basically an equally good player to step in and take his spot, which is what Angelo's here to do. I mean, he's probably not quite of the same level, um, but 
he's nearly there. And then we've got Jao Virginia to be our new third choice goalkeeper, um, sharing the backup spot with James Trafford. To fund all of this, um, there has been lots of outgoing transfers. I think we got as far as Lemkin leaving before. Chambers Shaw's gone out on loan, as has Simons. Loser did go to play in Saudi Arabia. £30 million he is earning. 55 That It's not actually not that huge for a Saudi Arabian transfer, but a guy we bought in for free to sell him later at 30 years old for £30 million. More smart business. Um... Patrick Roberts has gone out on loan for the season, as has Cherry. And then we got a bit of a surprise because we got an offer for Jack Clayton, £15 million. I mean, I thought he was the future when we were back in League One, but he didn't really step up to the Championship, never mind the Premier League. Didn't start a single game last year. So to get £15 million for him is bonkers. Um, so Jack Clayton has gone. We've also managed to sell Cabango as well, which makes that deal look all the better. Bring him in for a free. Don't really use him at all sell him for nearly £8 million pounds the following year. We're getting good at that kind of deal. And then we've also left, look, got rid of the three remaining players from our days in League Two have all gone out on loan. So um, Imari Samuels has gone to Oxford down in League One. And then it is a sad day, but captain and vice-captain have both left the club. Joe Powell joins Barnsley on loan for the season and then his contract expires at the end of the season. So he will then be gone. And Ross Stewart, same situation, but... Swap the name for Fleetwood. He joins them on loan until the end of the year and then his contract expires. So all three of the remaining League Two players will be leaving the club in the next 12 months permanently and we're not going to see them anymore. Um, With all that being done, we've still got a big pile of cash and need to figure out how we're going to spend it. If we have a look back in at the squad planner again, now everybody who was going to leave has left. There's probably an argument for getting rid of one of these left backs. Um, I'm not rushing to do it until I know how good Ayanita is, but for him to have four ahead of him is bonkers because he's the wonder kid. So we probably need to clear some kind of space. Gallagher and Potter I'm not too worried about, but I don't think we need Sousa and Galvez. So we might look to move one of them on at right back. Obviously, we've got Dubai and Gallagher. Um, and then Pajoy can play there. We do have to be a little bit wary with this guy because he has got a £3.4 million release clause. So there's every chance that he'll never even play a game for us because there's some bigger clubs than us who are interested in taking him on loan. Um, if someone just comes in and pays his release clause, he might leave. As soon as we're able to, we will try and offer him a new contract that doesn't include the release clause. I don't know how I've let that one slip through. I think it's because he was such a gamble of a signing. He was one of those where uh, we've had a we've had the initial scout report. It looks quite good, and someone else was in for him, so we just took the gamble at a million pounds, and it it's worked. But now we need to make it work work by keeping him around. Um, we do need another centre-back. We've only got four and not massively confident about Potter. So bringing in another centre-back is a priority. Someone at of the level of Jackson. Um, Avalos is not quite there yet. Um, and then Zaruki is starting defensive midfielder with Alonso as his backup. Kingsley Aziz has come back from his loan looking worse than he did when he left as far as the star rating is concerned. So he's not advanced at the same kind of speed as the rest of the squad. On the other side, we don't know how good Oscar's going to be. Hopefully he's good enough to start with Loser having moved on. But really, I think Alfie Devine probably needs to step up and become a defensive midfielder. We'll see how he gets on, but I think we do need another defensive midfielder, so we probably do want to sign one of those. In attacking midfield, we've obviously got the new boys up front. We've got lots of options, but none of them are as good as Lee Byrne. I think I'd like to sign a striker, and if O'Donoghue stays, we're fine on both wings. If O'Donoghue leaves, we probably need to lose a winger. Uh, sign a, wi a right winger, sorry. Um, but the new boys in on the left are fine. But I'm thinking centre-back, defensive midfielder, striker. And we've got £30 million pounds to do it. Let's go see what we can find, shall we? Homo's spine is fixed. And that is the... I mean, I mean, that's absolutely the perfect signing based on what we just described. A defensive midfielder who can also play centre-back. He is a wonder kid. He is the best defensive midfielder we've got at the club now. If we have a look at the... Uh, at the squad planner, you can see that he would be the second best deep line playmaker, the best ball winning midfielder. And also, I mean, he's right up there as one of the best centre backs we've got as well. So that is a good signing right there, boys and girls. We're also um, in the interests of uh, wonderfully named footballers. 
Uh, we're also trying to sign Saturday Sunday, who I've been monitoring for a few years. Um, he is the striker that I would very much like. Um, he's quick. He's a quick finisher. We want a quick finisher. He's very expensive. In order to be able to fund him, we are going to have to generate some cash from somewhere because it's 39 million pounds all in one go we're trying to sell galvez we've had a seven and a half million pounds offer off the back of an intermediary for him but even that wouldn't be enough so we're probably going to have to find somebody else that we can cash in on i'm looking at rodrigo alonso and i don't want to do it he's been great for the last couple of years but or even, and that one would make me sad. Oh, now. Is there anyone who'd be interested in, I mean, an inter, yeah, okay, so we can't get Alfie Divine out the door. I mean, this might dictate which one of them we get rid of. Is there any interest in either of them? No. Okay. Um, We might not get Saturday, Sunday. There's still time. There is still time. That's all I want now. A head, a headline striker. That is now the weakest point in the entire squad. We need a goal scorer. We must find one. Oh, by the way, as well, absolute nonsense. Uh, Pajoy, um, we've had to turn down a loan offer from Barcelona for him now. Barcelona want to take a player on loan from Burton Albion. We really, really, really need this guy to agree a new contract where that minimum fee release clause isn't in there because the moment that happens, clubs are going to be in for him. We just need to try and get in first. We found an absolute gem. I think we're probably going to lose him, but... It's mad. Absolutely mad. What a what a summer this is proving to be so far. Wonder Kid shopping. I love Wonder Kid summer. It's great fun. Well, Saturday, Sunday isn't happening. He's decided to sign a new contract with Leeds. So that's sad. Our search for a striker continues. I don't want anybody to panic. I've been playing football manager for over 25 years and have never had a tycoon takeover. If we get a tycoon takeover in this save, I really might never leave Burton. In other news, not been able to buy a striker. Kind of given up on that for now. Maybe get another defender? I mean, the squad is good enough to start the season, but we've got plenty of money left. So maybe if we could get another centre-back, I'll keep an eye out for a striker. There's still two or three weeks to go before the window closes. We are about to hit the start of the season. so. Unless someone springs out from nowhere, we're probably not going to get another deal done before that Fulham match, but we'll see. And if a tycoon comes in, I'm signing another 50 players and I don't care. Well, I decided to spend the rest of the money on one more wonder kid. Joshua Daniels is a 20-year-old Welsh international, 13 caps for Wales already. Um, he's a centre-back and a right-back, can also play left-back. He is a wonder kid and he's basically us raiding Aston Villa again, who've been relegated. And uh, we're just picking the bones off of their defence. We're raiding relegated Aston Villa because we're the big club. That's great. Love that. Um, so he can slot in as another option at the back, um, as a centre-back, as a right-back. I mean, he can just fit anywhere across the back four. It does mean we're completely spent up. So unless this tycoon turns up, we're probably not going to be getting a new striker. Um, but the uh, the actual team is looking really rather snazzy. If we have a look at what the game thinks our best 11 is now, um, Lee Byrne is injured, which isn't ideal with the whole not having a striker thing. Um, <laughs> it'll be fine. We've got plenty of options up front, but a slightly new look. Three here with Amo Amayor on the left-hand side. Divine needs to step up this year if he's going to remain part of this team. But a very new look defensive mid midfield two with Oscar and Homo as... What's that? 21 and 20, I think. So a young central midfield partnership. And then a back four that has um, the returning Dubai, Souza, who was great last year. Um, six foot four, Joshua. Sorry, six foot two, Joshua Daniels. Um, it's the other guy who's six foot four. Who's what's Dylan Smith is the other guy we signed off Villa who's six foot four. We've got a couple of big boys off of Villa. And of course, new boy Quintana in goal. That is a very solid looking 11 with some 
I mean, plenty of wonder kids on the bench. I mean, Pajoy, who, by the way, is currently discussing or waiting to sign a new contract, which will give him a £22 million release clause. So that would be that would be preferable if we can get him down to a new release clause. But he's a wonder kid. Solari, Ian Eater, and I think they're the only three. So three wonder kids on the bench. That'll do. We'll take that. Let's see what the media think we're going to do this season. We're going to finish second bottom and get relegated. Fantastic. Did we ever get any clarification on the stadium? No, no, we didn't. We haven't spent the 25 million that was rumoured. So the fact that that's not been spent suggests... Um, there you go. Ground maintenance. Yeah, we've not spent it. So I suggest that was just... I find it... Very surprising that I'm saying this. Maybe football manager had a little bit of a bug in it. Seems pretty unlikely, um, but it does look like we're going to be playing at the Peter Shilton Stadium this season and then moving back to a tiny Pirelli. Uh, next, I mean, not even next year. We're moving back in March, which is bonkers. How many season tickets have we sold? Once again, we've sold more season tickets than would fit in the Pirelli, although I guess the new Pirelli will fit more in, but can't we just stay in Nottingham forever? Seems like the sensible thing to do, really, doesn't it? But to summarise that summer, that's been a big summer, and we uh, we started off with a couple of big buys. I'm just, I think we've done, I think we have just about broken even over the course of the summer. So 104 million in, 71 out. But before then, we had... Another 10 in, so what's that, 114 in, plus we had another, I mean, so, okay, I can't do the maths. One of you lot could do the maths and let me know down in the comments. It's close, I would think, to a break-even summer, which is not too bad. We're also still trying to sign this guy um, from Barcelona, a 22-year-old at Barcelona who's played for Spain to come in as another centre-back defensive midfield option. We need to get him fully scouted as well. Um, but he's been identified by my director of football. So uh, no matter how many times I click that, it doesn't show us scouting him. Um, we won't sign him immediately um, until we've scouted him properly. But uh, potentially, he might be good. Director of football, just weighing in, doing his thing. Don't know how we can afford him. Sometimes the director of football does some strange things. But who am I to get in his way? Who is our director of football now? Probably someone who's been here since we were down in... Uh, down in League Two. Our director of football. Oh, it's Les Ferdinand. Okay. Fair enough then, Les. Go about your business. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.